Good morning. The shalom of the Lord, not the missing nothing broken. Listen, God is too good to be misunderstood. The Messiah is coming back, so I don't know when. That's he didn't tell me. I just know it's gonna be soon. The Holy Spirit is amazing. God is amazing. Jesus Christ is amazing. I'm sitting at this railroad track. There's no train going. Number 15 on the post. 15 is prophetic for rest. Resting in the Lord. Um, there comes obedience. There comes obedience is first. Fear the Lord. It's the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and correction. Six things. God hates seven is an abomination. Um, repent for our sins, people. I do. <laughs> I, all the time. A lot. <laughs> I repent for the sins of y'all. <laughs> people don't realize that about me. <laughs> I'm forgiving. I'm loyal. I'm loving. I'm kind to a fault. Long suffering, yes, I have <laughs> been rebellious, yes, I have learned my lesson, yes, I have been chasing by the Lord, yes, I have ever so thankful, <laughs> ever so grateful. Nehemiah 18, <laughs> that's why I can chuckle and sigh and just shake my head because I love God with all my heart and soul. <laughs> And um, it's a lot of lessons that little people learning or ain't learning. I don't know. But listen, going back. A while back I had a dream about an elephant. <laughs> elephant was flying. I have to download my dreams because God don't told me to write the visions. He said because the visions. At first when I heard the word, the Lord said it's just going to tarry. The time is going to tarry. But now the last word that came to me. By the Holy Spirit said that it's not going to tarry no more. It's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is here. The coming is here. The day of the Lord. The kingdom is at hand. It is at hand. Um, people are manifesting whatever spirit that has controlled them. And if it ain't the Holy Spirit, if it ain't the love of the Lord, you'll know it. So it is evidence. You got Leviathan the spirit. They want to twist things around. That's the one who I had to flee from in the twilight. In the midnight, like I was in captivity, I had to flee. I was digging in a wall. It's a whole lot of prophecy that was involved in that. God gave him a stroke for blasphemy. He threw him on the floor. He was wallowing around like a fish without water. Like a fish without water. I didn't know what was wrong with him. I thought he was trying to play it off like he was doing exercise, you know, because... Had a mean spirit on him, you know. So I ain't paying no attention. I was listening to the audio Bible. I ignored him, walling on the floor. I looked at. I got to find. He fi he finally said, "Help, help!" You know. Now let me tell you. The night before, the night before, he was wanting to argue with me about things that God had revealed to me, and then he wanted to argue with me about every green thing on the earth. I said, "Every green thing God planted," he said, "was good." He wanted to argue about him eating pizza. He liked pizza. He liked this. He wanted to eat this. He wanted. And he kept looking at me like I was weird for eating green stuff. Like I was eating healthy. He didn't understand that. So he wanted to argue with me. I said, well, let me tell you something. Hold up. That's the night God put him on the floor, gave him a stroke. He almost lost his little life. Hmm. He was incontinent. He had to urinate on himself. He couldn't have. He didn't have any motion in his left arm and his left leg. Thirty-three years old. He kept saying "GD," non-pardonable sin. I kept telling him, "Lord, rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus." And uh, he was excused after excuse. Talking about he trying. I said, "No, brother. No, you don't try." What? That's something you don't try to stop. You stop. Yes, the Lord to take it out your mouth. People are too superficial. They're too lukewarm. They play too much. God is not to be mocked. He is not to be mocked. He gave him a stroke. And then he listened to some heathens because the family a bunch of heathens. They, 
he was telling them that, you know, he wanted me to sit there and help him with his man. But then his family getting his head talking about him. Uh, she ain't your responsibility. I want to say, and his mama. Talking about, she not your responsibility. I saved your son's life, lady. That's what I got to say to you. So boo to you, cause you a heathen as far as I'm concerned. And whoever else is in his was in his ear talking uh bad about it. I've been a nurse for 25 years, lady. You lost your uh medical license for doing whatever you do. So you need to deal with your own issues, baby. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. Look at your son. Look at the state of your son. Hmm. In the hotel room, been in the hotel room for two years. You lost your license. You was in jail. So, lady, don't come for me. Judge not, at least she be judged. I saved your son's life anyway. And God gave him a stroke and clogged up an artery in his brain because he was blaspheming all ago. That's what you need to worry about. Anyway, get back to the dreams. Um, I'm going to upload them. Um, it was one. Let's go back because the first one I had when I was like seven years old. And, um, I was like seven years old and it was, I was, oh, I jumped that I was swimming away from a pit of crocodiles and, um, yeah, those are like the narcissists who've been always trying people. It's like a spirit has always been after me, like my whole life or whatever. And anyway, in this dream, I was a little girl. I was in a hometown where I kind of grew up in. Um, that my mom and God rescued me out of. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was in a ditch. I used to swim in the dirt ditches. And then I was swimming in the ditch in this nightmare. And a bunch of crocodiles was like after me. You know, and I was like, ooh, trying to get away from them. So that was seven years old. Um, that was when my mother and my grandmother was living. And I, um, they used to say, you know, we were buking in the name of Jesus. And so that's when I, I learned how... You know, God, my mom, my grandma, they put the love of the Lord in me at a very early age. And I'm so, 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 so thankful. And I'm so thankful. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, start recording for a minute <laughs> to get my composure. Um, you know, don't be a mocker. Don't be a naysayer. God has a peculiar people, the remnant, the 144, you know, so... You do what you want to do, but I pray that you, a lot of people, will really know what love is <laughs> and compassion. You know, that's my prayer because there's a lot of people walk around mad all the time. And it's just sad to see people all mad and pruned up and looking all like, no, why is you mad? You are alive and well and breathing and talking. So, to God be all the glory and all the power forever and ever. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. Um, whoever, you know, when God, God is going to talk to you either in a still, quiet voice or in a shout. So when he gave that guy <clears throat> a stroke, that was a shout. God said, this is a sign. I think it's Ezekiel, Habakkuk. And it's, it's a couple of things that I read that specifically talked about him. And I hope he gets the Bible and finds out. And his mama or his uncle or granny or whoever, all his family. If y'all care about him, you better tell him about the fear of the Lord. And stop playing. Don't play with me. Don't come for me. Because this ain't what you want. Because I got, you know, I love God. And I, God told me, he said, be of good courage, Joshua. Don't be afraid or dismay to their faces. Because the Lord thy God is with me. His rod and his staff, they come for me. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shepherd, I will fear no evil. Okay? All right. So, anyway, um, blessed to be a blessing. And I ain't stressed. I'm not oppressed. You know, God dealt with all those spirits of rejection and subjugate. He, you know, all those things are gone. So, um, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.